And it's on. Mr. Chairman. Well, let me open this thing up first. <laughs> Time having arrived, I called the uh, meeting of the Finance Committee to order for today, May 7th, uh, June 17th, 2019. Councillor Ianeri. Mr. President, if I might, I, I just want to take uh, just a, a couple of quick seconds, and I think it's only appropriate that we um, just have a moment of silence. Um, as we all know, uh, last week he, the mayor lost his um, dad, 92 years old, World War II veteran, uh, Mr. Bill Carpenter. And um, Mr. Carpenter um, was um, probably the, uh, the best friend I believe that the mayor could have, having have lost his, his mom some 37 years ago. So I think it's only appropriate that we just take that moment of silence to remember uh, the, the gentleman, um, he was in the chambers here several times when the mayor was um, uh, reelected and sworn in uh, as mayor of the city of Brockton, and he always uh, cherished uh, that, that moment of being here. Um, so uh, for us to, to do that, I think, is, um, is the right thing to do. So I just ask for a moment of silence for, for Mr. Carpenter, who was, um, who was buried just this past weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Chairman, um, in light of the uh, public hearings for streets, um, there's a couple of issues, uh, items that I think will take really brief. Number six, number seven, number nine, number ten. I'd like to make a motion to take those second. out of order. Motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor of taking six, seven, nine, and nine ten. and ten out of order. All those in favor? All those opposed? We shall do that. Madam Thank Clerk, you. number seven, please. Number six? <clears throat> no, seven. Seven. Transfer <clears throat> of 125000 from Treasurer's Debt Interest Short-Term Notes to Treasurer's Medicare Tax invited Martin Brophy, Treasurer, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Brophy. Good evening, Councilors. Welcome. This transfer is just to ensure that the City has we have enough in the budget to pay the city's portion of the Medicare tax. Favor recommendation back to full count. Second. Second. Motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Brophy. Madam Clerk, I uh, in my motion it was number six as well. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, let's do eight first. I mean, let's do nine first, and then we'll go to six. Nine. Ordered. Acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of seventy-seven thousand six hundred and three dollars from U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs 2018 Edward Brine Memorial Justice Assistance Grant JAG to Brockton Police Department 2018 Edward Brine Memorial Justice Assistant Grant JAG Fund invited Troy Clarkson Chief Financial Officer John Crowley Chief of Police. Chief Crowley, Good welcome. Evening. Thank you. This is a Justice Assistant Grant that we've gotten in the past few years. Seventy-seven thousand uh, dollars. Twenty-one thousand of it is going towards overtime. Eight thousand nine hundred dollars uh, is going towards consultants and contracts, and forty-seven thousand seven hundred and two are going towards equipment. Favor recommendation back to full second. council. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number six. Appointment of Catherine M. Asaf. 5 Tarkin Hill Lane, Bridgewater, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years, invited Catherine M. Asaf. Uh, is Mrs. Mrs. Azak, please come forward and the uh, microphone is yours. Do you have a statement for us or anything you want to <coughs> share I'm with sorry, us? I'm sorry, did you say something? I can't hear you. Uh, do, is there something you want to say to us? Statements? I can't hear. <laughs> can't hear? Something. He wants to know if there's something oh, you want to say to them. Oh, I, thank you. I wanted to be, um, hope to be reappointed as a constable in the city. I have enjoyed working in Brockton for, as a constable, probably for close to 40 years. And I do run a constable office with, along with my husband, David ACF. We're both constables. We've um, enjoyed working for a lot of the citizens, residents, and um, a lot of landlords and attorneys, and um, 
you know, I was hoping to continue to do that. Motion to recommend favorably. A motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, number 10, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $80,433 from U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs 2017 Edward Vine Memorial Justice Assistance Grant JAG to Brockton Police Department 2017 Edward Bryan Memorial Justice Assistance Grant JAG. Invited Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief of Police. Chief Crowley, how are you? Good, thank you. <coughs> this is a, an additional JAG grant from 2017. Uh, consists of $20,100 towards overtime for community policing efforts, 9,000 for consultants and contracts, $51,000, $333 towards equipment. We have a recommendation back Second. to council. Uh, motion has been properly made and second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Favor recommendation to the council. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, let's go back to agenda <coughs> number one. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Alexandra's Way, extending from West Chestnut Street southerly a distance of 765.71 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Invited Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Uh, Councilors, I, uh, I also got a, a call from uh, both Rob May and uh, Larry uh, Rowley that they're both unavailable for us tonight, but he, uh, our DPW commissioner sent his able assistant to, uh, sir, please. Good evening, counselors. Uh, the city doesn't, uh, the uh, DPW doesn't have any objections to this. Uh, counselors, are any questions, uh, concerns? No. What is his name? I'm sorry, Patrick Hill. I'm the Patrick director Hill. of operations for the DPW. Uh, is there any are there any questions for Mr. Hill? No. no. Can I enter? Motion to recommend favorably. No, the hearing. Yes. Oh, it's a hearing. Uh, so. It's gonna yeah, there's in yeah. favor. Huh? Is there anyone here? Right. No. In favor. In favor of or anyone here in opposition to? Maybe in favor. No, it's not a public hearing. hearing. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it, it is. is. It's public right hearing. above number one. Yeah. Public hearing at the top. Oh, public, it says that on the top. Let me, let me pull my glasses on. <laughs> that would help. Uh, is there anybody here in favor of this petition? <clears throat> anybody in favor of this petition? Please come forward and speak. It does, it does say public hearing. Please state your name in, uh, to the clerk, please. Uh, Patricia Jacobson, 26 Alexander's Way. Um, and I am one of the trustees for the newly formed Chestnut Woods Homeowners Association. As you may know, this is an over 55 development that um, was um, started um, about 15 years ago. We <laughs> thought it might be a little bit swifter be being finished, but at the completion, the streets and sidewalks would have, were to be dedicated to the city of Brockton. So that's what we're asking now. So for Alexandra's way as well as Rachel's way, it's part of an over 55 development. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is there anyone else here in, in favor of? Anyone in favor? <coughs> Would you like to come up and state your name for the record? My name is Jean Pinheiro, and I'm also in favor of what she just said. I also live in um, Alexandra's way, 46 Alexandra's way. Thank you, sir. Anyone else in favor? Going once, going <laughs> twice. I declare that portion closed. Is anyone here in opposition of this? <laughs> you want in opposition? <laughs> going once, going twice. I declare that portion closed. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Yanir. If I, if I might, Alex, Alexander's Way is uh, in Ward 3, and as everybody knows, the over 55 uh, complex that is off of uh, West Chestnut Street, so naturally I'm um, in support of what we're doing here this evening as, as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now can we uh, entertain a motion? 
Move to approve. Second. All those in favor of uh, positively recommendation to the city council? All those opposed? It carries. Numbers two, please. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Rachel's Way, extending from Alexander's Way, southwesterly and southeasterly, a distance of 647.28 feet, more or less to Alexander's Way. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Invited Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Hill, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, we, the DPW has no objections to this. Thank you. Time having arrived, I declare the public hearing open. Is anyone here in favor of this petition? Anyone in favor? Please uh, come up to the microphone and state your name. Um, Patricia Jacobson, 26 Alexander's Way. Uh, this is the second street in the same development, so we would ask that it be accepted as a public way. Thank you, ma'am. Is anyone else in favor of this petition? Anyone in favor? Hearing none, I declare that portion closed. Is there anyone here in the opposition of this petition? Anyone in opposition? Going once, twice, and three times. Mr. Chairman, if I might, again, this is Ordinary. Rachel. Rachel's Way is also part of the um, over 55 uh, unit there off of West um, Chestnut Street, which goes along with uh, Alexander's Way. So I'm in favor of uh, what we're doing here this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Favor recommendation back to the full council. Second. Second. Motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Favor to the city council, it goes. Number three, Madam Clerk. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Cottage Grove Avenue, extending from the end of the 1967 layout at Woodard Avenue, southerly, a distance of about 322.27 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, <coughs> it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Rockton. Invited Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Hill? Again, Council, we have no objections to this either. Thank you, sir. Time having arrived, I declare this uh, public hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? In favor of this petition? Hmm. Going once, going twice. That portion is closed. Is there any, anyone here in the opposition of this petition? In opposition of the petition? Going once, twice. Councilor Yaneri. Mr. Chairman, Cottage Grove Avenue is located off of Hillberg Avenue and the remainder of the street is private where we have a cul-de-sac where other homes were built. That's why we're asking for the 322.27 feet mm -hmm. so that I will be able to um, do this street for uh, this coming uh, fall. So I'm in favor of what we're doing here this evening. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. A uh, motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Uh, number four, please. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Cypress Drive, extending from Rockland Street, easterly and northerly, a distance of about 1,402 feet more or less, and for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Invited Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Hill, haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> we have no objections to this either, uh, Mr. President and Council. Thank you, sir. Uh, time having arrived, I declare this public hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? In favor of this petition? Going once, twice, three times. Is there anyone here in opposition of this petition? In opposition? Going once, twice, three times. And that portion is closed. Councilors? Mr. President, motion to recommend favorably. Second. A motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those in opposition? Motion carries. Number five, please. Ordered 
that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Rock Meadow Drive, extending from Rock St Rockland Street easterly, a distance of about 1,200 feet, more or less, and from Rock Meadow Drive northerly, a distance of about 310 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Rockton. Invited, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Lawrence Rowley, DPW. Mr. Committee. Chairman, uh, Council Sullivan. Just if I could have the minutes reflect, I reside at Four Rock Meadow Drive, so I'm going to recuse myself from this matter, but I do have a lot of my neighbors here in the, in the chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hill. Mr. President, we have no objections to this either. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, time having arrived, I declare this portion of the hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Anyone here in favor? <laughs> All you folks that are here are not in favor of this. Nobody's going to get up and say something. John O'Donnell, 30 Rock Metal Drive. I'm here in favor. You're in favor? Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone else in, in favor? Okay. Going once, twice. In a half, in a third. Philip Nasrallah, 36 Rock Meadow Drive, in favor. Well, this is where all you guys live, huh? That's correct. <laughs> nice. Going to once, twice, three. I declare that portion closed. Uh, is there anyone here in opposition of this petition? If you are, please come forward and state your name to the clerk. Don McDougall, 44 Rock Meadow Drive. I'm opposed to this. I don't feel it's necessary. There's never been an accident on the street in the seven years that I've lived there or anyone getting injured. I feel it's a waste of the city's money. Uh, I'm of the theory that if it's not broken, don't fix it. And I don't like the acquisition of the land when it's not necessary. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in opposition to this petition? If so, please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Tree Turner, 47 Rock Meadow Drive. I haven't seen any plans on how this is to be implemented, but I'm opposed to anything that's going to um, provide an easement where we would lose land. I'm not really sure of, of what the um, proposal really states, but um, if it means that we're going to be giving up land without any kind of um, award, then I think that I'm opposed to it and my husband as well. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else here in opposition to this? Please come forward and state your name and address. Good evening. Uh, my name is Juan Torres, 55 Rock Meadow Drive. Same as uh, my previous uh, speaker here. Uh, we oppose because we don't know about the land proposition and what uh, was going to happen with the awards and things of that nature. So for now, we oppose. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in opposition? to this wow. order. Going once, twice, and a half. Please come forward and state your name, please. Patricia Monteith, 29 Rock Meadow Drive, um, and I am opposed to this. Thank you, ma'am, and your opposition will be noted. Again, going once, going twice, I close that portion of the hearing. Mr. Chairman. Mm. Council Fowler. <clears throat> Just for those councillors who have had roads done before, streets done before, I am I wrong? I don't, I don't think the city takes land from any of the, uh, any of the abutters to the street, because uh, I don't think Attorney Nesralla or Mr. O'Donnell would stand up and be in favor of it if that were the case. So I think it would legalize, if you will, our ability to do snow removal and it would also authorize us to make street repairs, which I think all of these folks deserve as taxpayers, just like everyone else that has a street that's ac accepted. But am I right, uh, Mr. Hill? Uh, to, my, to my knowledge, Council, that is the way that it goes. The existing conditions um, would be repaired or uh, upgraded and, and um, as needed with, with, with uh, funds from Chapter 90 money that we can't use otherwise. And, and am I right that we would have to authorize any easements anyway, correct? You wouldn't be able to just go down there and say, I'm going to take six feet of your property and six feet of your property. Any land taking generally, that's the way that it would happen. It would be uh, an agreement between the homeowner and the law office. Okay. 
because I, I, I feel better now that hopefully they understand that this is actually to give them a benefit that a lot of other folks already have. And, uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I just, Councillor Lally, I was just going to say actually what you always say here, but go right ahead. You can say it. Oh, no, now all the pressure's on me. Um, no, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to add to what Councillor Farwell said. Um, you know, the the notice that people who live on these streets get is written in, um, you know, it, it's it's written to to speak bluntly, sort of to cover the city's butt legally. Um, it's not clear, and it certainly can be a little stressful to read. Uh, basically. If we go forward and make your road public today, you are going to wake up tomorrow and nothing's going to be different. The, uh, the only change is a legal status and that of the road. Uh, the city is legally not obligated to plow private ways. The city is not allowed to pave private ways. It would be like paving someone's driveway. Um, if the easement covers the width of the road and some space for sidewalks, nothing more. Nothing will actually be done to your road with the acceptance of this. this is, it does not come with money attached to pave the road. It does not come with you know a timetable to pave the road or to add sidewalks or anything like that. It merely makes it possible. It merely makes it an accepted city street, um, which also has the added benefit of counting toward the mile of ro the miles of public road in the city, which affects how much money we get from the state to pave roads every year. It's not going to make a world of difference, but bit by bit. Um, this is not something that we are trying to tinker with because something needs to be done now. This is something that is done to prepare for the future. Right now, your road can't be paved. It makes it possible. <coughs> we don't want to come upon a day where your road is in terrible shape and needs to be paved, but it cannot be. This is, this is just... You know, this is just an act of, of planning ahead into the future. It does not, in my in in the way I've seen it, um, negatively impact anyone's quality of life. It really won't change anything besides the legal status of the road. Uh, as I always say, you pay the same taxes as everybody else. This is simply just to get you the same treatment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council Lally. Um, I would uh, entertain a motion. Motion recommend favorably. Second. Uh, motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor of the motion? All those in opposition? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilor. Madam Clerk, agenda number eight. Please. Ordered a copy of all legal documents executed between the city and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for these properties to the city and the outstanding promissory note signed by the corporation be provided to the city council. One, a summary of all outstanding contractual agreements, outstanding invoices for services or goods, or any other liability which was the responsibility of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and which now may be incurred by the city be provided to the city council. Two, if payments from public funds have been made for charges formally required of the corporation, such information shall be provided to the City Council. Three, documents and information requested shall be provided within 14 days of the date of this order. Invited, Michael Gallerani, Executive Director, Brockton 21st Century Corporation. Dan Evans, President, 20 Brockton 21st Century Corporation. Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor. Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Mary Lynn Peters Chu, City Auditor, James Cassiri, Building Superintendent. Uh, Council Farwell, I believe this was your uh, resolve. Yes, and uh, it was me. In, in fairness to everyone who's here tonight, I appreciate all of the materials that have been given to us. This we received this tonight, which is maybe a couple of inches thick. Unless there's strong objection from my colleagues, I would suggest that we allow Mr. Claxon to do his PowerPoint presentation and we excuse everyone else until those of us who methodically plod through all this have a chance to look at it, put together some questions and be prepared. There is no way that 
I can possibly ask intelligent questions tonight without having looked at this stuff. I mean, I just can't do it. I, as much as I think I know what's going on, I want to look at this and I want to confirm it, find out what <clears throat> facts and information have been presented. So again, that would be my suggestion. Obviously, my colleagues may have another thought, but let everyone else go except Mr. Claxon. Uh, Council, I just want to make sure you know that we're in the uh, summer schedule. <laughs> I, I, uh, which means that we Mr. have one FinCom per month. July, yeah. I, I understand, but it, it, you know, somebody took a lot of time to put this together and to get it to all of us and to make copies. And for us to just say, okay, well, we received it, now let's go forward, I don't think that sends a very positive message to the residents who sent us here, and I don't think it sends a very positive message to all the people who took the time to put this together for us. Okay. Mr. President, <clears throat> sir. Council Board, guys. Um, I can understand what my colleague is saying, and I'm not disagreeing with him, but I think at this point, since we have people here, I think that if they wish to speak, then we yeah, they think, should be I think we can. Alive. I think we can do that and then uh, have them, you know, we can always postpone this and have them come back. But since Whatever. they're here, I think it all, it's only fair. <laughs> Mr. Clarkson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. You. I did prepare a presentation in an attempt to just provide a general overview of uh, the status of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and the Stadium Conference Center as I see them. Uh, so I've had the opportunity in the last four months to do a fair amount of research. Um, I think what I'll cover tonight in the presentation encompasses most of what uh, Councillor Farwell requested in his uh, original order. I think that the Councillor is correct that there's a tremendous amount of information to absorb. Part of what I'll review tonight is a bit of the history. Uh, some of you were involved, so have uh, perhaps a better sense th than I. But I tried to look at it uh, as objectively as possible in my role as the CFO to really try to chart a course together. Uh, I, I'll digress for one minute and share with the council a conversation I had with the president uh, last week. Um, and it was really a, a high level conversation about how we look at issues like B21, but not just this issue, the budget and other uh, the upcoming capital investment and some of those really overarching issues. And so one of the things that we talked about is taking the opportunity in this forum on a regular basis mm -hmm. to have uh, conversations, to really be able to have a free exchange uh, of information so that when we talk about building a police station and a fire station and renovating a high school and investing hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money, when, we, when you take a vote on that, it will hopefully be on the foundation of uh, a, a very broad and detailed exchange of information. So I look forward to regular visits to the Finance Committee, uh, not for specific legislation, but to be able to spend some time to delve deeply into some of these issues. And, uh, and I, I appreciate the President's willingness to, uh, to, to move forward in, in that respect. So specifically as it relates to, to Brockton 21st Century Corporation, which from this point on I'll call B21, and I want to thank Karen. Uh, her skills as budget director far exceed her role as, uh, as Brockton's uh, Vanna White tonight, I, but I do want to recognize uh, her willingness to stay here uh, this evening and, and help out with the presentation. So what we've done is really put some information to you together in three separate uh, compartments where we've been, where we're at, and, and where uh, we're going. So to, uh, to take a look at where we've been, sometimes the past is so painful it stays in the past. There we go. So uh, I have here a binder that was prepared by my predecessor, Jay Condon. And uh, it was prepared in real time back in 2002. So in this binder are all of the original documents. Uh, and I'm happy to share any of them with you. Uh, 
we'll go through in a few minutes what's actually in that packet that we provided to you. Uh, but the original uh, note and mortgage security agreement, the, lo the loan repayment schedule, uh, the, uh, the Morgan Security Agreement, which was recorded at the Registry Deeds and still is on record there. In fact, the record keeping was so good, we have a copy of the receipt from the recording. Uh, so there's a tremendous amount of useful information in here that I'll, I'll refer to tonight. But to simply walk uh, the Council and members of the public through the process that we've been through back in January of 2002, the City of Brockton and B21 entered into an agreement. And in that agreement, uh, there were a series of documents uh, the most important of which related to an $8 million note uh, that was tied to the Stadium and Conference Center. There were other monies involved at the time in constructing the Stadium and Conference Center. There was a grant from the Commonwealth and there was a generous gift from the Campanelli family. But what we focus on now is, uh, is that, that note for $8 million. Uh, the, the note was related to some, uh, a bond that uh, the City of Brockton sought, and that was to pay for its portion of the construction. Uh, that bond has been paid in full. And so there's no outstanding debt from the city's part uh, for this property. However, that responsibility was transferred to B21 in, in that promissory note. Uh, so that mortgage and security agreement, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, was recorded and still is recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Also at that time, the original uh, license management and operations agreement, I'll simply for tonight's purposes call it the lease for the stadium was executed. That was updated in 2012, that's in your packet. So the lease between B21 and the operator EMC, uh, also known as the Rocks, is in your packet. So I reviewed that in detail and I think that document goes into detail about what the responsibilities of then B21, now the city, and the baseball team are. And, and so I, I find that very helpful. And so that was updated in 2012. Next slide, please. And we can go back to any of these if you want, obviously. So to just give you a little detail uh, about, the, about that lease, uh, and it was amended a couple of times. So what you have is the most recent version, and that was provided to us by B21. And uh, as I mentioned, B21, I, I do need to specifically uh, call out Dan Evans, the president of B21, who during our uh, period of gathering information and documents has been extraordinarily helpful uh, and open and, and cooperative. And so it really has been a great relationship. Uh, B21's attorney, Brent Warren, is also here, who has also been extraordinarily helpful and cooperative. So despite whatever difficulties have occurred, uh, we've all worked hard to, to be collaborative uh, and to share as much information as possible so that uh, the city can move forward and, and understand uh, what limitations are or are not on the property. And so those two folks have really been helpful and I'm glad that they're here tonight. So the lease itself uh, was originally for a one-year term, but then if you look uh, in the lease itself, then there's a renewal provision that uh, stretches out to 2031, and so we're still operating under, under that agreement. Uh, the team was responsible, and that's in quotes, that's directly from uh, the lease itself for ordinary and incidental maintenance, and, and so there have been questions about utility bills and about maintenance of the facility. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but we have one here. So uh, I believe that the lease is fairly clear about who's responsible for maintenance and uh, of, of paying the public utilities, including water and sewer. At some point during the process, uh, the, the conference center and the stadium were, were separated out, and uh, <coughs> so the current op uh, operating agreement with EMC or the Rocks is for just the stadium. So the reason why we're here is because the, the B21 board, uh, and I actually went back and looked at those minutes. We have them and can provide them to you if you'd like, but uh, la late last year the, the board convened and decided that uh, they were no longer able uh, to continue to operate 
the facilities and in a letter from Attorney Warren to Mayor Carpenter back on December 31st noted that they were no longer able to meet the financial uh, and management obligations. And so if we look at this as sort of a divorce between B21 and, and, and the city, that letter from December 31st was really the initial filing. But uh, I know that uh, Attorney Warren and Attorney Nasrallah agree that there's more work to be done to finalize that, including addressing that mortgage and security agreement that remains on record at the registry. And so I'm sure that Brent and Phil can talk in more detail about that. Uh, but that's the situation uh, as it stands right now. So the city assumes responsibility uh, for the stadium and conference center as of January 1st, essentially. Uh, uh, and so w we immediately, obviously I wasn't here at the time, but when I say we, I mean the, the city team, uh, began to make an assessment of the facilities themselves and what work was needed. Uh, one of the questions that was asked was to compile a list of the work that had been done and so uh, Jim Kassiri and Mel Peters Chu worked very hard together and re reviewed many invoices. And so there is also in your packets uh, a list of invoices that total some $170,000. Uh, and that represents the work that has been conducted by the city uh, since that period. That does not include uh, overtime incurred by Jim's staff, correct? Uh, uh, w which is another substantial amount uh, that, uh, that we can provide to you. So the city has worked tirelessly since January 1st to assess and uh, to make some improvements at the facility. In addition to that, uh, we in my office continue to look at uh, the expenses uh, th that occurred prior to December 31st and uh, some investment in, in the property and maintenance and really just doing our due diligence and looking at those expenses and now having the opportunity to look at the facilities and to, to ensure uh, that the, the maintenance uh, that was provided for in the report uh, was indeed completed because as Mr. Kassiri spoke a couple of weeks ago, we certainly had some concerns about the, the physical condition of the buildings uh, when, when we took over. So we'll continue that analysis, and, and what my hope is, is that this is, uh, actually as Council Farwell suggested, the first of many discussions on this topic, uh, that we put a lot of work into getting where we're at, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So in addition uh, to our assessment and investment in, in the property, uh, the lease that you have is still in effect, and so the Brockton Rocks, uh, as we speak, perhaps, I don't know if there was a game scheduled today, but they are actively, uh, using the facility and, and have baseball scheduled there. I reached out and met with the principal of EMC for the primary reason to establish a relationship and to try to get some communication flowing uh, there as well. The, uh, their first lease payment under that lease you'll see is due uh, in a couple of weeks. It's due on July 15th. We did go back and check and they did make the uh, full payments of uh, 62,500, I believe, for last year. Uh, so there are some questions about the utility payments, but the lease payments are up to date. Uh, there's been lots of discussion about the utilities. I'll skip over that and come back to it because uh, I'd like to discuss it in more detail. One of the other things though that we, we did uh, cooperation with the mayor's office and the public properties department the city, as you know, has a contract with Amoresco, an energy services company, uh, to provide energy efficiency upgrades uh, at, at various city buildings. At the time where the city contracted with Amoresco, uh, the stadium and conference center were not listed as city assets because they were under the control of another entity. When we took control, um, the, the mayor's office went back and filed a request for a waiver with the uh, Division of Energy Resources uh, to allow the Stadium and Conference Center to then come under 
that contract and the DOER approved that waiver, which was really good news because uh, the, the DOER's contractor, Amoresco, has now already been on site, has begun an analysis to see uh, under that energy services contract what improvements and upgrades uh, can be made to the stadium and conference center. And so very briefly how w one of those contracts works, if you're not familiar with them, those companies actually perform the improvements themselves uh, and generally get paid out of the savings that's created. So that was a, a, when the legislature passed the Green Communities Act some 10 years or so ago, one of the provisions uh, was this provision that allowed for energy services companies uh, to come into communities and make upgrades. So we hope and anticipate that we'll be able to make some improvements to the physical plant, uh, just as examples, this has not yet been determined, to the, to the HVAC systems, to the lighting, uh, to some of the other mechanical systems, maybe to the elevators, anything that uses energy. And so we're hopeful that we'll be able to make upgrades to some of those items uh, at no cost to the city. So uh, that's something we will really look forward to. Okay. Also, uh, so on the utilities, uh, Treasurer Collector Marty Brophy conducted an analysis that's in your packet. And so he mm -hmm. separated out what's owed uh, for the utilities between previous operators and the current operator. There has been some dispute between um, B21 and EMC about who was responsible for those outstanding utility bills. Uh, so I think as we move forward to execute whatever documents will ultimately be uh, required or decided upon to formally extinguish the relationship between the city and, and B21, that will be one of the items that will be up for discussion and what the disposition of the, what those outstanding utilities would be. Uh, I can tell you just based on my professional experience, uh, the 189,000 is from previous owners, uh, unrelated to EMC, uh, the current operator. And, and so uh, it's advisable, I think, to, uh, to just write off that number because it's, it's uncollectible. Um, next slide, please. So where do we go from here? And, and that's really, I think, a question for all of us, not just the councilors uh, and the mayor and the CFO and B21, uh, because def despite the fact that in the mayor's budget recommendation, the organization was uh, defunded, the city still intends to support the organization as it still exists and has uh, a, a board of directors, particularly a president, that are committed to its mission. So I think we need to continue the, the dialogue and really start to answer some of the long-term questions about what is viable on that site, uh, both from uh, an athletic stadium and as a conference center. Uh, just v very informally, we've had some discussions as a team, including uh, Jim uh, and Larry Rowley and, and myself and other members of the team. And you know, when you look at what that facility needs, to say that the investment that's required is in the two to three million dollar range is not at all, I think, outlandish. Um, hopefully the presence of Amoresco will address a large portion of that, but until we have a formal proposal, we won't know. And of course, uh, this is, remains, despite some of the concerns that we have about the current condition of the facility, it remains a very valuable facility, uh, a huge asset for the city for which the debt has been paid off. Uh, so it, it's uh, really important, I think, to have a community dialogue about uh, what, what the future should be and, uh, and, and really invite participation uh, from the council and, and beyond, because uh, it, it's a very valuable asset to, uh, to the city. So with that, I, I will, uh, through you, Mr. President, certainly be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I'm just really introducing uh, 
the, the issue to you. I'm sorry, Karen, could you put just the w one more slide? Because I, w I did have a list uh, of exactly what, and I'll explain very briefly, of exactly what's in your packet. Uh, so we've provided that December 31st, uh, okay. I want a divorce letter. Uh, the lease between B21 uh, and, and the rocks that remains in effect. The next two documents, uh, after the transition, B21 provided to us uh, a report of maintenance costs and investments that they had made uh, in, in the property. And so we've, uh, in its pure form, just simply made a copy of it and provided it to you. That document is the one I spoke of earlier, that we're really going through each and every one of those expenses and trying to validate uh, the, uh, that the work was indeed completed. Uh, the same goes for the financial report. It's just, uh, th that one is a three or four page report that uh, in, in a very broad brush, 30,000 foot view from B21 says, here's the money we took in and, and here's what we invested. So we passed that along to you as well. I thought it would be useful for you to have the actual bylaws of the organization uh, so that you could understand the, the inner workings uh, of the organization itself. As I mentioned, we gave you that spreadsheet uh, on the out outstanding utility bills. As part of the lease, uh, EMC, the tenant is also required to provide regular financial statements. And so uh, I reached out to them and, and they provided me with their, the last one that they provided. There's another one that's imminent, but what you have in your packet is the most recent financial statement from, uh, from EMC from the tenant. And then in a separate packet uh, provided to you by Mel is uh, copies of the actual invoices uh, and a summary that amounts to that uh, $170,000 uh, in costs that have been incurred since January 1st. So that's, uh, that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. We do have, uh, as I mentioned, a significant amount of information I have here at my fingertips. Uh, I, I will add one more thing. Council Linda Castro reached out to me on Saturday and, uh, and, and did request uh, some additional information. I believe most of what has been requested is either in that packet or has been presented to you tonight. There was one item that was not uh, and that was a, uh, a list, a schedule of the payments made by B21 to the city since the original agreement. And uh, I want to thank Mel for providing that to me today. So uh, what I have here before me is uh, payments that have been made to date in the amount of $2,579,683. I'll give you copies of, of this schedule. Uh, Thank you. The next logical question, obviously, is from that original eight million. What what is still due? So you can't simply subtract two point five million from eight and mm -hmm. get five and a half. Because when you look at the uh, oh, yeah. the actual agreement agreed to, uh, there was a, a repayment schedule that included interest. So. Yes. Uh, the actual total amount on an $8 million loan was upwards of $15 million. Mm -hmm. Now, when the final uh, documents are executed, that amount will be extinguished, but I, I wanted to have that uh, available for you should you have <coughs> questions. So, uh, that is a Regist, Dieter's, uh, Reader's Digest version of a very long uh, and complex novel that's been written over the last <coughs> many, many years. So I tried to encapsulate it as briefly as I could for you, provide supporting documentation that begins to answer some of your questions, uh, but certainly look forward to, uh, along with you, exploring more details as we move forward. Council Farwell, you still have the uh, follow-up. Okay, again, without having had a chance to look through all of this, um, and any one of you jump up, whether it's Attorney Nesrala or Mr. Kasseri or someone else. This whole issue of the stadium, the conference center, and Brockton 21st Century Corporation is somewhat personal to me because that corporation was formed when I was mayor. 
I was there when Governor Weld signed the law that created the corporation. And what began as a dream for the city, particularly with the construction of the Shaw Center and the stadium, has been an absolute financial nightmare for the taxpayers. Not only do you don't not only is the promissory note not going to be repaid, although in fairness I understand they paid back out of eight million, I think it was six point three seven million remain, so there was about a hundred and 67 million, 1 million 670 thousand that may have been repaid. Then we started subsidizing them because two years after they took over the stadium, there was an article in the newspaper about how the administration and the council apparently forgave $600,000 in payments that were due to the city. And at that time, one of our colleagues, Councilor at Large Thomas Brophy, pushed and pushed and pushed that issue and said, I just want to make sure this doesn't happen again. Well, it did happen again because we have subsidized them right up until last year. This is the first year I think it's been zeroed out. So if you gave them $250,000 for 10 years, you gave them $2.5 million in addition to all of the money that wasn't paid back. But then what really irritates me is that supposedly the corporation were the giant movers and shakers in the business community in Brockton. Well, they were such movers and shakers that apparently they didn't keep track of the fact that we had escalating water and sewer amounts that were owed to the city, which we require from all of our residents and businesses, mm -hmm. but apparently we turned a blind eye to whomever was up at the stadium and the Shaw Center to the tune of $189,000. So add that into the nightmare. <coughs> so now we come current and I'm going to rely on a couple of my colleagues who I guess went to the Brockton Partnership meeting recently. Am I correct that the statement was made by someone that, well, some city officials want to look back instead of forward with respect to the stadium and conference center? Is that correct? Am I getting a nod yes? Well, I'll tell you why we need to do that, because I don't ever want to see this repeated. If we have another project whatever it may be, and we engage a private corporation, I don't want the taxpayers screwed. And I guess in the year 2019, it's okay to use that, it's okay to use that terminology. I do not want that. Now let's go to February 19, 2019, and what do we get but a B-29, uh, strike that, a B-21 presentation to the city council and briefing. And what do I get on this piece of paper? Here's one paragraph. Oh, I just love this one. On December 31st, 2018, the stadium and conference center were turned over to the city. The city received a conference center that was newly renovated inside, clean to near new condition, and ready for the future. B-21 made the conscious decision that going forward, it as an organization was not equipped to continue as the owner of the property. Apparently, they couldn't even be a landlord because they didn't bother to go inspect the property periodically to find out what was going on. Then we have Mr. Casseri, and actually all of you, I, I had a family commitment, I did not tour it that day, but we have Mr. Casseri who goes up to the stadium, and we have items missing from the kitchen, we have multiple roof leaks, we have rooftop units that are 17 years old, only four are working, the kitchen has multiple issues, the backup generator has not, uh, oh, rebuilding of the backup gener generator has been completed, excuse me. Uh, installation of a new three-bay stainless steel sink is needed. Ceilings were destroyed in the front portion. Roof leaks have caused mold issues. I believe we had to replace all of the tables and chairs because there was mold on them. Bathroom ceilings need replacing. Function room rug needs cleaning. Purchase new portable bars because apparently those were stolen. But remember, February of 2019, we received a newly renovated, ready for the future, Shaw Center. Yeah, right. So, you know, I take it personally because when we say the city takes over the conference center and the stadium, no, the taxpayers, the residents who live here take it over because it's their dime that's going to be necessary to straighten this mess out. So I guess my first question is going to be, I want to know, because I, I, I don't have time to go through this, who can answer the question of who's paying the electricity for the, for the stadium? Because when you have baseball games up there, 
and you're under the lights, and sometimes those lights are left on until 2 in the morning because I have a businessman who closes up his business and goes by there. Who pays the electricity? Does anyone know? Sorry to rope you into this, Mr. Caseri, but... We are. What we, meaning the city? We have paid the bills that uh, have come our way since we took over. Okay, how about the bills prior to that? Was there, was there a rearage that was owed? I, I don't think so. Okay, are there contracts for things like environmental services, security services, elevator repairs, uh, cleaning services that, that we now have to pick up because they were signed by Mr. Gallerani or someone else from B21? We're, we're doing all the repairs that we can do that come our way, the city is paying for. Okay, but how about, but, it, but these were contracts signed by the corporation? Uh, they, had, they had certain individuals under contract and we're not honoring those contracts. We aren't? Well, yeah, okay. I can't because I can't honor a contract that wasn't made with the city. The, the contracts were made with B21. We can't make payments to a contractor that doesn't have a contract with the city. Okay. We have allowed the uh, elevator company that was working there, it's Atlantic Elevator, um, to make some repairs there, and they've, they're up to like about probably eight grand, and we haven't exceeded the $10,000, which would require a contractor for us to go out to procurement. I have allowed them to do that so we can have, we have one working elevator there right now out of okay. the two. But I can't, I can't give them any more money, so going forward, if we're going to have to uh, go out for procurement. And by the way, procurement, it will be a great help. They always are, and I'm going to be throwing a lot of work Mike's way, but we're going to have to procure an elevator service. Um, hopefully, the uh, the Amoresco company will be able to come up with energy savings concerning the elevators, and maybe they will be able to do the repairs necessary if there's enough energy savings that can cover the cost of those repairs. That's what I'm hoping for right now on the elevators. All right, it's my understanding there is a, uh, there is well water available, but the well pump does not work, is that correct? Uh, the well there, as far as I know, they turned it on last week and they rusted out the entire front of the building. So I had to send my guys over there for three days doing a rust removal on the building. So they didn't take the time to change the filters or do whatever is necessary to prevent that from happening. We showed up there one day and the building was red. So, right. what, what, what so were the, our eyes, by the way. What, what is the stat, since the rocks are operating there, what is the status of pest control and cleaning the areas that you mentioned were quite, shall we say, unattractive? Um, as far as the infestation, that yes. we're referring to, Councillor. Mm -hmm. There is still some issues there. Um, the, the major portion of the building that's affected are the offices in the Rocks Stadium, not in the Shaw Center. The Shaw Center is in much better condition physically to look at and cleanliness-wise than the um, Rocks Stadium side is. However, on the Shaw Center side, we have 11 rooftop units, and I think only two of them are working right now. So okay, who, who can answer the question about if the if in fact we had or if in fact B21 had an insurance policy on that building, damage caused by the people who broke in or theft of items from there, do we get insurance settlement? <clears throat> One of the items that's outstanding from my perspective to reconcile. Uh, the finances of the two organizations before the final documents are executed is just that. So I, I'm aware uh, that there was an insurance settlement. I've not received information about exactly how much, but I know that there was an insurance settlement. I believe it to be six figures or greater. Uh, so one of the things that, uh, uh, that, that I need Mr. to look Warren at. Mr. Warren, answer that. Would Mr. Warren be able to uh, answer? If there was an insurance settlement uh, with B21, did they did they get the proceeds from from an insurance policy? And if so, where are the proceeds? So I believe that they did. Uh, and I, what was said to me by the executive director was that the, they had incurred costs uh, that exceeded the amount of the insurance settlement. I won't accept that on its face without 
significant due diligence and investigation. So my answer to that question is that the city continues to analyze and to reconcile some of the figures provided by B21. That's what I referenced in my presentation, and we will continue to do that. You, you know, I have to tell you folks, and I, you know I don't pull any punches, it wouldn't displease me if the DA's office or the Attorney General's office looked into all of the records mm -hmm. for the last three to five years. Something isn't right. Yeah. Something isn't right. There's a crime committed up there, there's a loss, there might be a six-figure settlement, and, and someone claims, oh, well, what, what, we had losses. Well, you, you just got compensated for them. Even if there was a deductible, mm -hmm. you, you might keep the deductible, but, uh, and, and again, that's why we will have to have multiple meetings on this, and it's not to take up your time or Attorney S. Rowley's time during the, the summer, but th th this really is an intolerable situation. And what worries me is, you know, you've got the rocks playing up there. What, what does the lease say about making payments for electricity? There's got to be, there still has to be, as you say, a lease between EMC and the city of Brockton. Does that lease call for them mm -hmm. to be billed monthly for uh, electricity or any other charges? Cleanliness, keeping the office clean. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at page 32 of the, the lease that's in your packet, uh, there's actually, it's addressed in section 10.02. Mm -hmm. The provision of field and common area utilities shall be the responsibility of the team. Uh, and then the responsibility of? The team. So, the team. Okay. in that case, it would be the rocks. All you and then section 10.05, all utilities attributable to the use by the team of the administrative office area uh, shall be payable by the team, and I won't read the whole thing. But the lease is, uh, I believe, explicit in that the utility is the responsibility of the tenant. Now, when so I we, so we have two separate electric meters, one for the Shaw Center and one for Rocks. That I that I don't know. I. I I think there's some separate items in there, and the scoreboard is one I think is on a separate. And I believe in that package you have the, the um, I read the original contract, mm -hmm. the 2002 one, but I don't think the 2012 one's much different, and they're responsible for uh, a lot of the stuff. They're responsible for the lighting, the condition of the lighting, the condition of the scoreboard. From the way I read it on the original contract, Councilor, I don't have the up-to-date one that you have, but I can't imagine it's much different. Okay, and, and uh, again, my apologies, but is there anything in here that says they have to present proof to us that they're paying the utility bills on time, if you know? I don't believe th that, that there is. It just is a provision in the lease that they will be responsible. Now, I, I'm not offering judgment on what I'm about to say. I'm simply relaying a conversation I had to you. Uh, one of the things that's evident to me uh, is that the relationship between the team and, and B21 had uh, deteriorated. And so when I, I sent an email uh, to the operator uh, of EMC and asked about the outstanding utilities, and the response that I got was that they had made investments in the stadium, uh, their figure that's unaudited, to the tune of $800,000, and so that was in lieu of uh, payment for the utilities. I don't find that acceptable. I'm simply relaying to you the communication that I, that I had with them. So there are several layers to this onion that we continue to peel away one at a time. And, uh, and, that, and that's the reason for my earlier statement that I think this is the first of, uh, I think, many meetings to really try to understand what the city's position is right now. Yeah, I, what I don't want, and then, I'm, and then I am going to give up this uh, issue tonight because I've got to do some reading. But what I don't want is for the city or the building department to keep having invoices coming in saying pay, 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 pay. I want to know who's responsible, what are they responsible for, and I want proof it's being paid, 
and I don't want to find out that we've got $80,000 in water and sewer bills still outstanding, and we've got electrical bills that are still outstanding, and, uh, uh, and I'm not saying Mr. English and his organization is anything like the, the ROCKS team that was there before, but they're the ones that walked away and left us with a $189,000 bill. And, and you know what, folks? Shame on us for not catching that. Shame on the council for not filing a resolve and having the appropriate city official or the appropriate team official come in and say, we want to know where we are. We want to make sure we're protecting the interests of the taxpayer. So I sincerely appreciate all the work that you're doing. I, I uh, you know, you probably never thought you were going to walk into a uh, audit of a baseball stadium and a Shaw Center. Uh, same to you, Attorney Nesrallah, same to you, Attorney Warren, and Mr. Kasseri and Mr. Evans. Uh, this can't be repeated. We, we must never have this happen again. Do I think we could have convention centers or other facilities in the city? Absolutely, but um, we'll get into this a little more, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councilor, Council Borgard. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is, first of all, I want to thank my colleague because I had been pushing for this issue. And what I want to make note of tonight is one of the people that frustrated us the most, who was asked to come here this evening, is not here. So this is part of why we have some of the pieces missing. Mike Gallerani, the executive director, uh, was not, to, how would I say, forthcoming with a lot of our questions. And I will remind you that three years ago, we were presented with the former uh, treasurer of the board of B21. And at one point, this was Matt Osborne, and he made the statement, why don't you just give us the Shaw Center? End quote. And I know that uh, we could retrieve those minutes. And uh, that's very significant because, wait a minute, you wanted it and you didn't take care of it. And um, I myself, I mean, let's remember that most of us were not elected on this council when um, the change came with Chris English. Because I do remember that and we were relative, you know, we were excited about it. We thought, okay, we're going to see some changes. But um, I know that the previous director of the um, B21 would physically go and make payments for the electric bills because the people that were supposed to be hand maintaining both the rocks and the uh, Shaw Center were not taking care of it. I remember once they even were supposed to have an event and they had not maintained their alcohol license and they had to hold a special meeting for the license commission to see that that would transpire. So this has been, as, as you reflected, a history of serious ineptitude in many, many instances. And what does a city do in this case when two People are hired and responsible for maintaining a conference center and maintaining a sports team and the activities that transpire. I mean, several times Todd came in front of license commission for various concerts, et cetera. And, you know, this was, we were excited that this was going to transpire. And the sad thing is I think it, it could have been a real successful operation regardless of the, you know, economy. And there were some times when the, you know, situation was tight. The reason I keep on pushing for this issue is because we wanted the transparency and we have to know our history to move forward. And I, I, I feel for uh, both, uh, all of you actually, because Jim is, is sending his team out there and he does not have a large team. And I'm sure that the new CFO of a city of this magnitude has more to do than follow up with this. And I believe that with the new leadership that we have with um, Dan Evans as the current chair uh, board of um, B21 could be economically positive. And I um, apologize, Mr. Warren, I haven't had the chance to meet with you and speak with you on that. But there were several people with some great ideas. And I believe that you have to have a whole team working together. And I believe that this started going by the wayside, you know, four years ago, when, uh, five years ago, when we lost um, the former director of the executive director of B21. But in the meantime, the citizens of the city have the right to know, and I am grateful, and I just want to make it clear that people can have access to this. 
and it, you know, this can be uh, made available to people if they wish to find out what truly happened with their money and um, in the meanwhile, as we try to find out with the bills that are here. And um, I, I will join my colleague in positively reviewing this and ask uh, the President to continue having this and encourage this dialogue. So I want to thank everyone that was here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Yanieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just have a, a, a few simple questions, and uh, I come on the same heels of what uh, <coughs> Council Fowles indicated to us also this evening. I mean, there's a lot here to digest, and and uh, he he wasn't here um, pretty much after this all got created some many years ago, which is the Brockton 21st Century Corp. And and when I joined rank here back in 2003-4, from from coming from across the street after giving the land to the city to, to build this project always left me with, you know, what will it be like 15 years from now? Because I always felt that we would uh, own the whole situation and that's just about what we have in front of us. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's, it's something that we have to digest and go through and, and I, I hope that we don't have to do what they had to do back then when Council Brophy was here because it never went over too well with the taxpayers when, when their mayor Eunice had to give uh, forgive $600,000 in debt. It did not go over um, that well at all. Um, just a couple of quick questions, Mr. Clarkson, maybe you can answer for me. Um, and, and I do want to, uh, I, I do want to know first off, um, and I know we didn't talk about it much or not that I hear it mentioned in, in the budget, but you know, a, a lot of how this was built and how it was paid for was uh, the basis of us using the state meals tax. And mm -hmm. where are we at with the state meals tax? I never heard it mentioned in the budget at all. I mean, is the money back to us? So uh, it was all part of the 21st Century Corp <clears throat> and the stadium. And now I want to know, is it back in our um, a domain of means or, or, you know, under our control or is it, you know, where's it floating? I, I don't know where it is. I, I, maybe you can answer that for me. So as I understand it, there was a dotted line, I'll call it, between the meals tax and the payment mm -hmm. of the note because uh, it, as you know how, how a municipal budget works, the money comes in right. under specific categories and goes out under specific categories and there's no direct link between those revenues and expenses. And so the, I think, argument was properly made that the, that, that revenue would be used to subsidize the payments due on, on the bond. Uh, the bond has been paid off. So in the 2020 budget that you discussed earlier this evening, there is a line uh, in the revenues for that, that that revenue source and I think Karen is a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars I believe so we accounted for that revenue in the budget that you just voted okay. because so previously it was not counted toward the operating budget uh, because it was identified and I'm using air quotes here as a revenue source to pay the bond right uh, now that the bond is paid off, we, we're using that as a general revenue source. Okay, so so it is being used. It's back into yes. Into our, it, it, it's all under us. And I'll, I'll find the exact page in, in your budget if, if that, you that's get that's fine. No, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I and I, I guess the other question that I have uh, concern with, um, as well as um, when we talk about insurance, right now there is still insurance on the facility. Am I correct? And is it being paid for? I, I, I mean, the insurance used to come out of what was in the mayor's budget. That's how it always was, you know what I'm saying? And now I know we're not there yet, but when we start the new fiscal year, that's gone as far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned, B21 or, or 21st Century Corp to me is gone. And that'll be my next question to, you know, where is the board? Because I don't personally believe we need that board unless the mayor's gonna convince I and 10 other councils that yes, there's a need shouldn't be when you have a planning economic development, you know, uh, uh, department within your, within your means. That's my personal opinion. But um, still, you know, we have insurance on the building, the facilities insured. If anything was to happen tonight, tomorrow, that's my concern. The simple answer to that question is yes. I yes. confirmed this afternoon with Chris Shepard uh, from Eastern Insurance who provides the city's insurance that the, both the stadium and conference center are covered under the city's policy. Okay, okay. Um, there are insurance requirements in the lease uh, between the city and, and the team. Right. Uh, 
so I, I, I can't stand here and tell you that those are in effect because I, I just don't know. Right. But I can tell you that uh, most certainly that the facility is insured by the city. Okay, so, uh, so and, and, and we move forward at that point that, the, that when the payment is due or whatever and however that works out, now it's the city that is paying it, not 21st Century Corp, because that's how it was paid before because the money was out of the mayor's budget. It's a city owned asset, so like right. all of our other buildings, yeah. it falls oh. under that. Okay. Uh, to answer your subsequent question, and I'll defer certainly to the city solicitor, but in terms of the, the board itself, so as Councilor Farwell mentioned, the Brockton 21st Century Corporation was formed by a special act of the legislature. Right, right. So the organization uh, continues to exist uh, until some adjustment is made to that. Uh, and, and, and so the city does not have the authority, I think, to um, to, to, I, I know you're saying. to cease the B-21 from existing. That's really a function of the legislature. Yeah. But I think the mayor recognized that it was time for the operation to come back within the city, which is why he right. made the budget proposal that he did. And so that's why in the budget you just approved, there is $145,000 in the public property budget to address the ongoing maintenance it, needs. It, it, at, this, at this point, though, the board is just regulating on its own. There is no funds going into it from the city at all at this point. Once the new budget starts, they don't have nothing. There's nothing coming from us. Correct. Unless we were to go in and do something to change how that uh, um, legislation was made. And, and you and I discussed this. As, based upon, as I said, you're based upon the same way the Plymouth County Correctional Facility was built so many years ago, um, back in its, in its day, and they built it separately because it was Plymouth County Correctional Corporation, which you know when you, when you um, serve Plymouth County. So I can, un I can understand that, but I, I, I think that's something that we'll have to talk about with the, with the mayor to be truthful with and how, how we're gonna handle that. And n now, let me just ask, is, uh, is Mike Gallerani, is he still, is he still working? Is he still a part of? I know he was retired and he was coming in one day a week. I mean, is that that something you can answer, or does somebody from the board have to answer that? To, you know, give me the need to to why. <laughs> I guess I'd I'd ask that question. I I'm aware uh, that that he is working. I think a, a minimal schedule of one day a week or so, but I'm happy to defer to 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 B21 on on the specifics. I am aware that he submitted a, uh, to the board a letter of resignation back several months ago, but right. was kept on uh, on an as-needed basis. So at, at this point, well, I, I, I think Dan's here, maybe he can answer it because I'd just like to know how how's his payment made if there's no money. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm lost. Yeah, that, that I, <laughs> I, I would defer. It Not too many people me. work for you know gratuity after they retire. They usually like to make a little something extra, right? I mean. Not being rude, but just a point of, point of information from my colleague on page uh, 11 of one of the sections of this handout. There were four payments from Philadelphia Insurance for a claim settlement on 12 7 2018. 26 675, 2990, 2990.6, 22 367.34, and 743505. That comes up to $86,467.99, and that's 24 days before this was turned over to us. I'd like to know where that money is. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm with you Thank on that, Council. Yes, I would too. Thank you. Uh, Dan, maybe you can just answer that last question. I Mike Gallerani still is employed one day a week to um, keep the current operations, which right now is uh, delivering information. Um, a lot of the financial uh, information, the insurance information last week, um, unfortunately, he's the only one that knows uh, where it is, where it was spent. Right. And it's just been easy to keep him on. We'd like to get a new director, but in good faith, I can't lead the charge for a new director if we're not gonna yeah. be in existence or where we're we going if we can't find a clear path or where's our mission we're, you know, uh, uh, yeah because because where is where is the clear path of, of who's going to be paying the person to be truthful with you because his money came out of what the mayor was given out of the you know what, what he would have in his budget for the two hundred twenty five thousand dollars if that's missing 
uh, who's paying them? Am I missing the boat here or something? I mean, I'm uh, it's coming out of what's somewhere. Left in our budget. What fund? It's coming out of what's left in our budget right now. Right now. Okay. What what is left in your budget? The future. I don't, I don't. I don't think there's a future with Mike Gallerani going forward. It's just no. a matter of. Um, do Do you know off the top what what do you have in your budget right now? Do you know what's left or? I don't. You don't. Honestly, I can we can we find that out, Mr. Clarkson? Maybe we can. I'd like to just. We can certainly ask. Yeah, I'd I'd like to. Yeah, if you could ask that, please. I'd just like to like to know what what is left, uh, because at that but my point is after June 30th, it's not really other than the fact. Yeah, you may exist, but I mean we have nothing to do technically with you. Right. Would be 21 or 21st Century Corp. To be truthful with you, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Right? I mean. You can come and see it before me and tell you, tell me you and others want to do this, that, and everything. That's fine. We had a group that did that six, seven months ago, and I don't know whatever happened to them. They never appeared again that they were going to do all these different things and work with us with economic development in the city and everything. But you know, nothing ever, nothing ever transpired. So, right. but in any case, I, that's just my my taste is um, is somewhat. Um, it, it always had a little bad uh, bad taste, and I agree with. You know, Councilor Fowl, I mean, he was more or less pushed into making this whole thing work back in his day as mayor. He, he came in at the most difficult times and they pushed to have this 21st Century Corp. And, and all of a sudden it went it went a different direction because they became a landlord and they should never, ever become a landlord. Never, never. So it's our problem now and we'll have to solve it. But appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, um, Councilor Ian Airy asked one of my questions. I was going to ask where Mr. Gallerani is. He is one of the invited guests tonight, and he's not here. So, and I believe um, you just mentioned, sir, that he's the only one that knows any of this, the finances. I mean, he's the one that has access to the finances and the insurance information, which is a little scary, but. Um, Correct in what you're saying. He, he should it, be here. It, he, why isn't he here tonight? I know he's an invited guest, so he wasn't invited. Uh, he did receive an invitation. As um, do you know why he's not here this evening? I don't. You don't. Okay, so he is still working for the city one day a week, I believe. Correct. And I, Councilor Yanaria, I believe he didn't retire. I think he took another job somewhere else. Is what I had heard. Correct. Correct. He, so he's working somewhere else and still coming to Brockton or getting paid from <coughs> from us once a week. Once so a week. what is he giving us for this once a week? What, what's his job, what's his role, what's his job description for this one day a week? Thank you. Mike, uh, Attorney Brock Warren for B21. Um, just, just to clarify again, Mike's payment is not coming from the city per se. It's coming out of B21's budget i, I don't mean to interrupt you but that's is. the problem is we've never been able to you know 21 the city you know th this has been going on for years it is technically city money um so i know it's not it's, it's coming it's from your budget relationship. there's no okay. no question about it but it is two separate and that okay. brings up the question of how we can't just say we're going to terminate it it was it was chartered it has to continue it's a right. non-profit it files as such um, but Mr. Gallerani is working one day a week on Fridays coming in. He had responsibilities related to his other uh, employment at a different town in Massachusetts, which prevented him from being here tonight. Uh, he has spent most of his time, as I've talked to him on Fridays, uh, working to try to uh, see this transition through, to make sure he can gather all the information, everything that's been requested of him. Obviously, there's a lot to do in a little amount of time for him to do it. Uh, he's serving at the pleasure of the board right now on a month-to-month uh, -month or week-to-week -week basis as, as we go forward. Obviously, the board is aware of the, uh, the defunding of it, and uh, it, it either needs to make a, a move to find alternative sources, grants, however uh, an organization would survive without this, or it's going to have to look at mothballing uh, as we go forward. But, so for right now, uh, Michael does have the keys. He understands what's gone on. 
he's able to, to work and to provide information as we need it. Um, probably the most important piece of this, I think the board, the council will be uh, most pleased with is we're within a, a hair of completing a two year audit with an outside firm that's looking over everything. Uh, we should have that audit. I spoke with the auditor on Friday. Uh, we're, we're very, very close to having that. I would suspect by the, probably the next time that we uh, reconvene, we'll have that. That will have been shared with the city uh, to, to show the transparency of what's gone on uh, over the last couple of years. Since, our, since I've been involved, in, and that's been uh, probably three years now, I can say that the, the relationship with uh, EMC, and I, and I just like to be clear, it's, it's a technical piece for, for the lawyers in the room. The agreement with EMC is a license, not a lease, and that's actually very important in this. And, and the relationship between B21 and the city was that of a ground lease. Uh, so it's, it's a very unique, this is a, an extremely unique situation um, to be in. It, it, there's nothing in the textbook that says this is how you do this. It was cobbled together in a creative way. Um, but I can say that in the uh, three plus years that I've worked as the attorney for B21, the struggles we had with EMC were monumental. Uh, constant fights for money from them, uh, total disrespect and uh, lack of uh, maintenance at the, at the facilities. Uh, it, it, we had all we could do to claw it back and I know some are aware of, of the things that went down. Uh, B21, uh, you know, we, we worked very hard to decouple the stadium from the uh, Shaw Center in an effort to save the Shaw Center from, from absolute ruin. It, it, was, it was going down the drain. Uh, and, and it was really in a bad shape. If, if anybody had gone in and saw the kitchen, you'd be appalled at, at the way it looked and, and what we had to do to, to get it back. So um, I, I can say from being on the front lines, there a lot of time and effort, but way more than ever should have been spent by B21 an economic development corporation mm -hmm. was spent being a property manage manager, and uh, it just never should have been that way. But there was a lot of effort. I was personally involved with a, quite a bit of it, um, and, and it was a struggle. Well, I agree with you. We took many of us toured the facility back in the beginning of the year, and I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not a land. I'm, landlord I mean I'm not in, in real estate but I know that what I saw was grounds for eviction like we sh they should have been out of there I wouldn't ex if I wouldn't leave a home that I rented or a business in that condition I was appalled I'm like I I was afraid of liability from their employees having them be in conditions similar to that and since the city was taking it over I was concerned about what they were putting their employees and what positions they were putting them in and then what position the city would be in if anybody, I mean, got any kind of illness or any kind of um, got injured in any way because really I, I don't know, I have no words. What I saw when we toured with Mr. Kasseri, all I kept thinking is they shouldn't be kept in this building, they should have been evicted. But that brings us back to uh, V21. So you were aware of that they had let the facility go it was, an ongoing, those, it was an ongoing fight with them. It was an ongoing fight. So it, it, in their, in their light, you said it's a license, not a lease. So they were, there was no, I mean, you weren't protected? And um, I mean, how were you not protected to I mean, be able to get them, to evict them? I just don't, I, something just doesn't make any sense. I, I can speak to this, uh, and I've, I've stated this to Attorney Nasrallah. Uh, it would not have been the document I would have drafted for this. The, the licensing agreement for the stadium and the Shaw Center were done as two separate documents that coupled them together for the most part. They had a lot of conflicting terms, uh, something that you could evict uh, or remove them for or cancel the license for on the one side was prevented on the other side. Um, as we discussed, B21 made multiple attempts to remove them and the problem we were we were facing is a lawsuit and they dug their heels in and said that because the stadium and the Shaw Center required umpteen million dollars worth of repairs that were supposed to per the licensing agreement the city or B21 was supposed to pour money in 
every single year towards capital improvements, and that had not been done. They always pointed back to that and said, if you want to try to get us out of here, we're dug in like a tick, and, and we're going to fight you because we argue that your failure to put millions into this is what's preventing us or, or our excuse for not having to clean this place up. Um, it was a never-ending battle. The, uh, the rodents, the, they would bring trash, they would leave it stacked up. I, I know, uh, I spoke with Mike about this numerous times. He'd go over and would be furious. Their dumpsters would be overflowing for months and months and months. And then we get complaints about rodents and raccoons and all different types. So of they were violating health code. I mean, they would, so they were in violation with other things. Did we ever find them? I mean, were they ever fined by the Board of Health or and the building department? I, they were I never fined by anything? That. I can't okay. speak to that. All I know is we, we put the pressure on for the last, since I've been here for the last two and a half or three years, I, I'm not sure how long I've represented uh, B21, the pressure has been on. We've had multiple meetings with them, <coughs> uh, some, some long drawn out uh, affairs uh, to try to get this ship righted. One of the things we were very happy about was being able to decouple and, and what we considered was save mm -hmm. the Shaw Center. At least it, it, we didn't have the money to, to fix up the, the stadium but B21 was trying to pour what we could back into the state, into the Shaw Center, so at least the, the people of Brockton would have something uh, nice to, to show for it. So that brings me to my, the other part of my question. The Shaw Center, I keep hearing, and I'm very familiar with the, um, the, the facility. I keep hearing that the Shaw Center was a loss, that they never made any money, and that's why, uh, even though it was a year-round business, I don't know how the Shaw sent, and they were always booked throughout the years. We keep hearing that they were, money was lost with the Shaw Center, yet the Rocks was the one that was supporting the two facilities, which makes no sense to me. So I just, can it you? It made no sense to B21. Okay. Uh, we couldn't understand how they were operating, why they were operating. Um, we, would, we would ask for the required audited financials uh, I imagine what was provided, the, the 2018 statement was probably simply a spreadsheet report of profit and loss, not an audited uh, financial. Uh, it was a constant fight. We, we fought with them to, to get them to live by the rules. What we got thrown back at us was, it's never been enforced, we're not doing it. Uh, and, and if you want to push us on it, go ahead and, and test us and end up in court in a lawsuit. Oh. So we were pushing to try to get this thing done. It was something that bothered B21. There was no way for us to prove one way or the other, but we were very suspicious. As much as the board is suspicious today about what's gone on with B21, it, it was the same thing for us. We were very suspicious as to what's gone on with EMC. How is it having a loss year after year after year uh, and still wanting to be here? <laughs> Which, which was the issue, but we couldn't prove it. Um, we tried. So that brings me to, I just flipped through this really quickly, and um, I see that there's a three bay sink that's been reinstalled in the, the Shaw Center. Now, um, once again, I'm not a plumber, I'm not a, con a contractor, but $6,000 just seems a lot of money when you know, for something like that. Who's making these decisions on what's going in there? I can't speak to that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that three bay sink was a special order. It had actually been worn out. So it, it it's kind of a barometer in my mind, like you say, why didn't they make any money? If you wore a three bay sink out, stainless steel sink out, you were certainly washing some dishes in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I look at it. I really do. So, but the th we paid for that three bay sink and we installed it. My, my plumbers. It was a special order sink. It's it's huge. It's huge. a six thousand dollar commercial three bay sink. Okay. So that's. That's what I asked earlier. Is I know they were doing well. They were booked constantly. They were there was functions there. They were making money. So for them to be able to come back and tell us that they they weren't is just I can't un answer unacceptable. No. Nope. So so everything's coming through your office, Commissioner, with new with what was it reinstalled, the upgrades. I know Mr. Gallerani painted, did the painting or picked the paint color and things like that. So did he you did work some smoke and mirrors in my mind, but right. um, 
you know, I should watch my rhetoric. Um, yeah, he, he painted the foyer and he waxed the floor. And I believe when you talked about the health department, I believe the health department shut them down. I'm not positive on that. I think the health department is what made that kitchen get cleaned. Okay. No, no. So they maybe didn't not. go That may not, may or may not be, but yeah, I understand though that it was in pretty bad shape, so. And for example, the wall that had, the outside wall that has the crack in the restrooms that had leakage all throughout the wall. Now, is that something that your department would have closed? I mean, by the time that I think the city found out, everything was in the process of closing out, but would, is that something that one of your inspectors would have closed them for? Yeah, I mean, well, they the would certificate of inspection time. in the fire department would not allow a conference center to be occupied if the ceiling tiles are missing for the simple reason that your smokes <coughs> detectors won't work because the smoke will rise above the ceiling and, and evade the smoke detectors. So the events we've had there while the ceiling tiles were missing, we had a fire watch in place and now we think we have the roof leak fixed so those ceiling tiles will be back in place which is a much better situation to be in right now. We think we have that roof leak fixed. Okay. The roof leak went the entire distance of the building, if you recall, Councilor. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. So, I mean, in, in your professional opinion, you think that it right now where it's in decent condition that it can be used? Or? I can't guarantee AC there, Councilor. No guarantee for AC. Okay. You know, uh, rooftop units are, are something that require a biannual maintenance. You, you, you maintain them once in the spring and you do it once in the fall. That means you go up on the roof, you change the filters, you check the belts, you grease the, the machinery, and it runs for a long time. If you, if you don't do those types of things, it's just like running your car. If you don't keep changing the oil every 3,000 miles, then your car's not gonna last too long, so. But they did get it 17 years out of them, so maybe they did the maintenance on them. I don't, I don't know the answers to those questions. I don't know if anybody does, but um, another question regarding um, the electricity. I see that there's a lot of zeros with that. I know you mentioned earlier that there's multiple meters. I mean, are they all, all these meters, are they in the city's name? Because I know if we didn't pay our electric bill, they'd come out and shut us down. So are they in our, is, are they in the city of Brockton's name? Or is that why I don't know whose name they're in. I know that every bill that gets sent to B21, Mr. Gallarani sends it right over to the building department, so. That's how it's going right now. I don't know who's obligated to pay them. We're discussing it and trying to figure it out. Jay Conan recommend that we at least pay the electric bills till we find out where we're going here, so we're doing that. Okay. Jay and I and, and Troy and Mel had a meeting and uh, that was his recommendation. Okay. Um, thank you for the information. Like I said, uh, Councilor Fowler also mentioned it's a lot of information, so we'll go through it and yeah. Um, one last question for Troy. Thank you, Commissioner. Sure. Troy, in this, uh, thank you for the information, but in this information that you've supplied us, is there any way that, uh, do you have profit and losses for the Shaw Center and the Rocks? Are they separated anyway? I really skimmed through them really quickly, but I don't know if you. Yes, the most, uh, the last or second to last document in that packet uh, is the most recent financial statement from the rocks that does include uh, a profit and loss. So we don't have it throughout the years, just this last recent ones? We don't know what they did like th throughout the years? I'm sure when, when I asked for the information, they actually provided a couple of different ones. I just provided you the most recent one to be demonstrative of the information, but uh, I don't have, I think, past years but maybe uh, earlier quarters from last year, whatever I have, I'll gladly give you. Okay, I'd appreciate it just because um, I've heard it numerous times that they, were, they weren't making any money at the Shaw Center and I, I find it really hard to believe. So if there is, um, if you have that information, I'd really appreciate sure, it. Sure, of course. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Clarkson, I just had a couple questions for you if you don't mind. Um, in terms of um, the light, and thank you, this is a ton of work, so thank you and your, your uh, colleagues. In terms of um, the insurance, under Section 13.05 of the license, 
there's a request, um, a requirement for the team to name the city of Brockton as an additional insurer, 13.05. Um, they need to supply the certificates by March 15th. 1304 stipulates the team policies and the financial limits of those policies. And, and now that the corporation is, is out of the loop, my interpretation that Brockton should actually already have those from EMC. And I just want to make sure that we, we do indeed have all what we need relative to certificates of insurance. I actually discussed that with our representative from Eastern Insurance today. I've not seen any. That doesn't mean that, uh, that they have not provided them. I think one of the challenges for us has been uh, the city's approach, I think, because there's been so many different offices involved, the law office, public properties, finance, uh, information has been shared from both B21 and the team with different offices. And so uh, I have not seen that. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist somewhere in the building. But one of the things we're doing internally now is meeting regularly as a team internally so that we all have consistent information. Uh, so the, the stadium and conference center were uh, insured by B21. One of the items you'll see in that list of expenses was a, an expense uh, off the top of my head, I think it was around 50, in the 50s, $57,000 or so back in November to insure, and then the insurance was canceled uh, by B21 after the first of the year, uh, which is why the city, the city picked it up. Uh, so there, there's still some questions out there in terms of insurance. I think what our thought process was, certainly mine was, was there is some confusion surrounding the insurance. We needed to make sure the facility was insured. No, yeah, no, I get happened. that. I, and you would, you would assume the obligation of the corporation. No, I'm talking about the team. The team had a requirement relative to insure us, the city of Brockton. Yeah, no, no, understood. Yeah, I have that section. Okay, I just want right to make here. sure that it has. So it would be going to Chris Shepard? Or would it be going here in house? Uh, th that's what I, I, okay. I'm not. So I have not seen okay. that uh, listing the city as an additional insured from the rocks, but I'll follow up to, okay. to see because uh, I'm just not sure. Okay, no, that's fair. And then, and one of the things you indicated, um, the hundred eighty-nine thousand dollar debt from the previous owner, you know, your opinion would be maybe just write it off. But in, in my my past experience working for other municipalities. There's companies that buy bad debt and go out to bring action for collections, and they'll get a percentage. I mean, wouldn't we consider doing that as opposed to writing it off? At least step one would be, hey, see if you can go out there and go after whatever the guy's name from California. But sure, I, yeah, absolutely, right? I wouldn't okay. oppose that. Okay. Um, and this again, Troy, you're new, so this might not be something that you can answer. But under the agreement. And maybe Brent, Brent can honor, uh, honor this, this question, but the school department was supposed to get a percentage of the parking. And I coached baseball, and I was up there the other night, and there was maybe two, two cars that I saw come in uh, from, from the, uh, the Belmont side uh, entrance of Brockton High. Is the school committee, uh, school department still getting compensated from Mr. English? Good question. I don't know. Uh, Attorney Warren, do you know that? I do not, I cannot speak for what the school department, uh, if it's coming directly from him. I know that B21's practice was to always take it. As a matter of fact, there were a few years where they didn't get the revenue that they were supposed to and B21 still made a payment uh, to the school department to, to sort of honor that as money that was expected to be. So th was the process originally rocks to you guys and then you to the schools? Correct, out of, out of the split, that was part of the formula. It, it's a very complicated formula, it's in the licensing agreement. Yep but they were to pay over a certain portion of revenue, parking revenue that would come over and then that would funnel straight through to the school department. So now that you guys aren't in the equation, it should be coming that to Troy. It should come to the city as part of the payments and then to the school so department. So we need, we need to follow up on that one. Okay, okay. And then while you're up there, Brent, just a quick question, just to follow up on, on Council Farwell, and it, it's obvious certain insurance payments were made to B21 and I, I'm a little stupefied if, if Mike, Mike is the only one that had the ability, like who cashed those checks and what expenses would have been attributed to those? As has been provided to me, and that's why I'm waiting for this audit to come out so we can have it yep. 100%. But as Mike is prepared for us and the board, 
was a, a list of what had been spent down. And I know with regard to the insurance payments, all of which came through uh, prior to the end of 2018, uh, it was a ballpark top ahead, 102,000 maybe, and um, change. And then on the flip side of that was an itemized list of all the repairs that had gone on at the facility. Uh, and that came out to 102,000 and actually a little bit more, maybe $500 more that had been paid by B21 ahead of time. Knowing we were gonna get the settlement coming in, B21, the board said, yes, go ahead, make repairs, do what has to be done to keep this place chugging. Uh, partially to keep us out of a lawsuit with EMC, because uh, they were very close to filing against us in the city for not having the facility done everything we're supposed yep. to. Um, and partially to provide a, a, what we hoped for was a good property to come back over. That had been the goal for several years, was to claw that Shaw Center away. It probably never should have been a combined lease, a baseball team operating a conference right. center. It's kind of a, a, a funky situation there. But those those prepayments that you guys made, yep. I mean, you have you obviously have invoices to back that up, right? Well, that's as an attorney. That's what the audit's. That's, that's what the audit is going to have. Because I'm, I'm, I, I know some of it's been provided here, but that's what the audit will will clearly show is every nickel that came in, every nickel that went out, so it can be accounted for and everybody can feel good about the. the I, I just I guess I can't figure out. And I used to be on B21. I was on B21 four times as presidents and stuff. So, so and, and you volunteer, that's the key. These people volunteer the time. I, I, I understand that. But Gallerani doesn't, he gets paid, he's compensated. And, and I don't know how, why you keep the guy around, to be honest with you. That's my humble opinion. June 30th comes, I get rid of him. But with that being said, if he's the only king of the kingdom and he knows where everything is, you need to safeguard that stuff in his office. Mm -hmm. Because if there's only X amount of check receipts and he disappears and goes back to Plymouth, we're screwed. So, so from that standpoint, um, you know, I think you're charged, you're charged to do that. Right? He's an employee of your corporation, even though you volunteer. And Mr. Evans, thank you for everything you're doing because you stepped into a hornet's nest. But I think at the end of the day, he should be here. I, I, yes. I understand the guy maybe has another obligation, but this has been in the queue for a long time. And it's tough to question, and it's not really fair to question Attorney Warren when the guy that has supposedly the answers isn't here. So my only suggestion would be to make sure we safeguard the materials so that we have proof, because I think it's a little suspect, some of this. Um, and, I, and I am in possession of quite a bit. All right, good, already. good. And, and, I, and I, I think he needs to give you everything, but you're the attorney and you can figure that out. I guess, I guess what I'm kind of confused about, and again, I've, I've read this over and I've been around for a couple of years now. Um, I don't know how there's any, I think Troy said it, there's confusion relative to the electrical expense between B21 and the team. And I don't, I don't see how the hell that can ever be because it's, it's clear that the team had an obligation financially to pay that. So they can finger point all they want, but a license is a license. And you made it clear a license and a lease are d distinct and different, and they are. But it is what it is, and it's executed and it's bound. So I don't, I don't see that. And now that, again, you guys are out of the equation, City of Brockton should come charging in, and maybe that's through Phil's office, because if the guy has, if the entity has a financial obligation, you pay it. If they don't pay it, they cease operation. I mean, that's, that's a breach. So that's my confusion, and I guess maybe it should be you working professionally with Phil to try to figure that nexus out, mm -hmm. but I don't know how you get around this saying the team doesn't financially have any obligation. Just, just speaking to that, it, it goes back to my earlier comment that these two agreements, which you would have thought would have been identical and totally reciprocating, aren't. They are very different in a lot of respects. Uh, there's a lot of contradictions. Um, you were allowed to lock the team out of the, the, the rocks, out of the, out of the stadium, but you could not do that for camping out for the, uh, the Shaw Center just as a for instance. Yep. Uh, it's a strange, a default under one was a default under the other, but they had provisions that you had curative rights under this one and not under that one. So th those licenses are a mess, in my opinion, and there's a lot of conflicting, contradictory terms in there. One of them, and I just mentioned this to Attorney Nazarella, is with regard to the electricity and the lights. That's something that we had started to go toe to toe with EMC over because there was a grace window uh, that, that lights had been picked up because it was part of a, a, the grant proposal, maybe the brownfield 
uh, there was some deal that we had and there's something in the documents and I can't recall it off the top of my head but I know we had this discussion that said that the city was to pick up the payments on the lights going forward and I know we had the argument and we had started down that road as uh, we ended up uh, terminating this whole thing uh, saying well this is how can this be we can't live with this because you could leave the lights on all night long and it's right. going to be charged to us. I mean, that's just not how it operates. But, um, you know, as, as memory, as best of my recollection, there is something in those documents that gave them something to hang their hat on that it is the city's responsibility, not theirs, to cover the electricity at the stadium. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll so go just, through that. So just bear yep. that in mind as you go through the documents. No, that, that's good. And my last question is, and, and Council Azak brought this up during the budget. So there were a lot of items up there, uh, personal property items, uh, you know, owned by, I guess, the city of Brockton, but, but the caretaker was B-21, right? And stuff that was stolen, you know, the movable bars and all that stuff. And, and Shirley had been there a lot more than me, but did, did, did B-21 ever do a, a, an accounting where they actually were able to- Inventory something. Yeah, an inventory, thank you. An inventory yearly to figure out what they had, what assets. Do, do you happen to that, know that? That I can't speak, I don't okay. know for sure. I know at the very end, uh, when we finally got rid of their sub-concessionaire who was in there destroying the, the yep. building, uh, we did go through, I physically was there that night making sure they weren't taking stuff that we absolutely knew was B-21 or the city of Bra, however you want to say, it, Shaw's material that they walked in and it was there that day. We, we tried to make sure that that stuff stayed uh, in place as to what may have walked over the years. Yep. I can't speak to that, and I don't know if, if B-21 had ever it monitored did, did, okay. that closely. Uh, you know, it's kind of an unusual thing. You've got a, a, you know, a long-term license with somebody you expect them to be in there operating professionally and doing what they're supposed to do. That's right. So trying to make money and, you know, on the flip side, making money for B-21 in the city on that. We just didn't see that happen. Okay. Thank you. And I, my last question, Mr. Chairman, would be to Attorney, attorney Nezzarella. Thanks, Brent. Phil, Phil, now that um, the city of Brockton replaces B-21, do we, meaning the city, have any concerns? Um, I guess from my, and I think again, attorney, uh, uh, Councilor Azak brought this up, you know, the rodent infestation, raccoons and all that stuff. So, so, so EMC or the Rocks entity had employees and have employees. They have a lot of interns and, and paid staff. But I guess my question is, do you think or maybe you can maybe opine on it at some point. Do you think that we, meaning the city, would have any liability based upon employees of the Rocks bringing an action against the Rocks and also now the landlord being the city of Brockton? Based upon the fact that they're working or whatever in an environment that might not be up to, up to standards. Something we should look at? I, I think it's something we should look at. Uh, quite frankly, I've been in the process since Councilor Farwell's um, request of pulling out strands of a spaghetti bowl trying to understand this. Uh, Attorney Warren's been helpful in, as he stated, there was a lot of conflicting uh, documents. There is some um, concern the way some of these documents and legal instruments were drafted where they contradict each other. There's not a real free flow of, of uh, the way it was constructed. Uh, then we get to the question of uh, pointing towards liability based upon the contractual agreements. So we are looking at it okay. in depth. And I would uh, welcome whatever inquiries or directions you would like to see us move in. We're already moving in several areas from accounting and financing contra contra to contractual obligations. And it's, uh, quite frankly, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to get there. I think we have to get there. It's important, but that will be something we will be able to opine on um, shortly. Thank you, appreciate that. And one last thing, and I don't know who this is for, but it's my understanding there was a gentleman, a citizen resident that was storing his historical museum items in the old Rocks um, mm -hmm. gift shop. Uh, is that gone? Because that shouldn't be in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, Hoagie's yes, yes. Yeah. hobby shop. Yes. I don't know how we ever ended up there, what the deal was, but there is still some stuff in there. A significant amount of it is gone, but there's still some stuff in there. 
Yeah, I, mean, I don't it just understand puts, that. Yeah, it puts the city in a precarious situation if all of a sudden there's a fire, and because a lot of that's on loan to him and entities like that. So, uh, are we working to say maybe bring him somewhere else? Uh, no. <laughs> right. I will. I will though. I mean, there's so much to address there, Councillor. But uh, that is something. Yeah, I'll, it just kind of shocked at. me when I heard that a private citizen was storing stuff there. Yeah, for I don't know reason. And I mean, he had a. I think some of the councils. Did you get to see that? You, Yes. I mean, he he yes, I did. he packed it in there, yeah. so we couldn't even really maneuver in there to uh, work on the the space he occupied. Okay. So he was jammed in there. I don't it's know what deal that right was. Now. He had. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we go to council for follow-ups, uh, anybody else that hasn't spoken want to say something? Ask any questions. I have Council Powell and then. Okay, Council. maybe just to close it up and in, in response to my colleagues' questions, uh, utility costs, page 33 of this contractual agreement, and it basically says that Oops. notwithstanding anything to the contrary in this stadium agreement, including but not limited to this Article 10, but subject to sections 10.08 and 10.09, all costs, including all charges, fees, taxes, assessments, abatements, inspection services of the delivery and use of electricity for the entire stadium complex, including the team areas, yada, 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 shall be the responsibility of the parties and the following respective percentages. Commencement date through license year 2018, the corporation 100%. License year 2019, the corporation 75%, the team 25%. License year 2020, the corporation 50%, the team 50%. So I'm guessing that we're on the hook for 50% of the electrical costs. Uh, what also is fairly interesting is that on page, it's, uh, well, I'm, the page number's down the bottom, I'm missing. I'm gonna, it's section 11.2. In addition to any obligations set forth in 11.01 .01, during the period from July 31st, 2014, the team shall expend no less than $50,000 for capital improvements to the stadium determined at the discretion of the team, but otherwise subject to such approvals generally as, as required under the agreement. They're also, the team is also responsible for replacing sod if they need to up there. I, you know, in, in response to what Attorney Warren said, I, I do think the corporation missed some opportunities to hold them more accountable. It's over and done with now, I understand, but you know, I really think if you look at this agreement, there was some teeth here. The last thing I would say is, I'm trying to be tactful, which is not one of my best points. Um, in my opinion, if, you, if, your, if your audit is predicated upon Mr. Gallerani providing information, and in fact he's being kept around to provide information, I'm not sure how valid that audit is. I mean, I hope it's based on hardcore documentation because otherwise it's a little bit like, like ask, asking the fox, now be honest, how many chickens did you eat while you were in the chicken yard? <laughs> no, it's, yes, the audit, auditor is independent auditor. <laughs> he's, he's got the information, he can, he's looking at everything that there is to see, ask questions, see what auditors do. He is going to report back to Dan and the audit committee, not to Michael. But you don't know what's coming out of there and you don't know what might be taken off of a computer. If you want a truly valid audit, wouldn't you lock everything down? As, you, as of right now, we have no reason to suspect that there's been any foul play whatsoever. I, I understand, but just... So with, with that being said, the auditor is going through. If he detects anything that seems slightly out of order, and auditors are generally pretty good at, at sniffing that sort of thing out, um, obviously that would raise a, an immediate red flag. Uh, but as to date, uh, you know, Mr. Gallerani is still acting as our executive director. We have no reason to believe that uh, he's, he's done anything wrong at this point. Um, as far as we can tell, he's, he's worked okay. diligently to try to solve this problem, uh, much to his chagrin. He's, he's uh, bemoaned it many times to me that uh, he wanted to do economic development and became a property manager. And, and that's not what he was really. Uh, well, I, I, th th that's true, but you know, the corporation took it on willingly. No one, no one held them down and said, "You're going to take over that stadium." You're going, you know, promissory notes were signed, agreements were signed. Here's what bothers me, and I'll ask. This is my final question. 
Beantown Builders, roof got a replacement, 12-7-2018, $23,556. Did you, did we have some roof got a replacement up there, Mr. Caseri? Have you ever seen any of that? I've seen no evidence of it. No evidence of roof got a replacement. Okay, then I. Uh, I can't say for certain on this, but I know there was a big issue relating to the stadium side of things. Uh, they pulled out. 5,000 baseballs out of the gutters. I mean, it was an extraordinary number of baseballs. They never put, or the traps got broken or something. Every baseball that ever hit the roof that everybody went woo to, rolled down and went inside the gutters and had plugged up the entire system. And that's what was causing some of the damages. <laughs> and uh, for B21's point of view, shame on EMC and all the prior owners who never went in and said, where do all these baseballs go that we keep losing? And never looked at it uh, until it became a point of a problem where everything was overflowing. So I, I can't say for 100 percent, but I think that's maybe what that was for. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Borgard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could ask the attorney to come back, I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting my exercise. I just. I want to make sure I understood you correctly. Before you were talking about saying how frustrated you were that EMC was not maintaining the property properly, did they ever give any reason why they didn't want to maintain the property properly? I mean, I just, I don't get it. <laughs> just it, it was a very frustrating process for us. Show that to Jim. One they're not showing any profit, which cuts directly into the funding formula that was created in those licensing agreements. If they did well, we were going to do well, yeah. and we could pour that back into the stadium, uh, which was the intent. They never did well, never got above the base minimums of what they were supposed to do, uh, very, very little beyond that. <clears throat> and the second part is they always pointed back and said, well, when we first showed up, we dumped whatever number it was, umpteen hundreds of thousands or a million dollars or whatever it was in 2012. And, and they did do that. They, they came in, they did sod repair and grass replacement and it was before my time dealing with this. But it, to everybody I've ever talked to, they all, everybody says yes, they did that work. So they basically hung their hat on that and said, well, we poured a ton of money when we first showed up and therefore we're done. We're not pouring any more money in, you pour the money into it. Is and it, it at that point, B21 does not have a capital budget that allows for, as we've talked about tonight, millions of dollars in repairs. Uh, and there was no way for us to, other than to simply continue to put Band-Aids, to try to do the best we could, but put Band-Aids on the problem. And that, and that was the response we got from them. Okay, thank you. And then one more question. You said that it's being audited. Okay, I see here that the EMC financial statement, um, it's from Riverbank Inc. And I am familiar with them. And uh, as last I knew, um, no one was a CPA. And um, you are having it done by a CPA, is that correct? Our, the audit? Ours is being done by Edward J. DeLuca, Jr. Uh, auditor. I, I don't know the exact name of his firm, but he's in Braintree. Uh, that that is his profession. That's what he does. Okay. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I, I Thank you. A, yeah, I had a long conversation with him on Friday about this. Uh, he's, he's very close. He's been pulling all the information together. He wants to be very thorough. Sure. And he no, understands no, I don't blame the scrutiny him. that's coming with this. So he wants to be completely bulletproof uh, when it comes before ultimately comes be back before the council to show where every nickel was spent by the organization. Thank you. I mean, I, w I would say that if you could do anything to change it, what was the first thing you would, would do? <laughs> I would have drafted two different licenses. <laughs> okay. That's where the problem started, and I think that's where it, where it ended. And uh, just, just to speak to uh, Councillor Farwell's point, it was uh, while there were teeth in there, there were just as many things on the other side that they could hang their hat in, and, and B21 was going to be looking at a <coughs> six-figure lawsuit. Um, based on, on the posture that EMC had taken in this whole thing. Uh, and there, there wasn't a lot of, uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of push to, to kick out the rocks at the time in the city. Everybody wanted to give them the best uh, chance and, and I don't think people realize just how bad things were, although B21 knew 
how bad they were. Uh, so we managed to push through, get, get at least the stadium decoupled without having to file a, a lawsuit. Uh, felt like that was somewhat of a victory and that uh, over the next two years, this thing will probably work itself out and everything will come back to the city. Again, thank you, and maybe um, before Mike Gallerani leaves, he could, leave, I don't know, maybe write down a little journal of what's transpired, and how would I say it, leave us a little bit of inventory of where everything is hidden, because the last time I was in his office, uh, I remember, and this stuck in my head, there were these renditions of particular buildings that uh, they, and I quote, these would be ideas for developers to see what you know they could do with a building that you know they <coughs> might purchase downtown, and it struck me as odd because I still want to know where they got the money to do that. Because usually renditions, as we found out recently, when it comes to a what a fire department, public safety um, building, are uh, costly. So it was it was just interesting. I, and I uh, believe he got interns at a design school. That oh, did that okay. As a, as a I mean, they project. were very attractive. Not, it may not have been a summer <laughs> project, but I'm I'm pretty sure that was donated time to create okay. those. All and right, they, thank you. They, you know, they were excited about the opportunity to do something <coughs> on a big scale like that. Okay, these are the things. That, again, we never received reports, and there was like, communication. And this, again, was all prior to Dan Evans pretty much taking over. So I want to do that. Well, so thank can, you again. Hopefully, we can alleviate that going okay. forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Durant, uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Uh, Warren, would you mind get back on sure. the podium? Thank you. Um, well, it seems like, you know, I'm kind of like somewhat frustrating when we get to not having uh, Michael Gallo any here to actually, you know, answer some of the questions that I do have. But I want to thank you, though, for actually taking the responsibility to give uh, somewhat information based on what you know. But here's the problem, though, that I'm that I'm seeing with this thing. If Michael is the guy that has all access or know all this information about some of the questions that we ask, mm -hmm. how come he's not here? And Mr. President, um, did you get a letter from uh, Michael Galloani saying that the reason why he wasn't going to make it? Did you get a notice from him? Council, I was not notified that he wasn't going to be. So, so he's the deal. I think this is very disrespectful due to the fact that I'm assuming you know, some of our folks sent a letter to the gentleman to let him know that this is an issue that we are talking about, and it's a very um, important matter. As you can see, everybody uh, uh, does have something to say about it. So if this gentleman is in charge of all of that, and he knows how important, how crucial this issue is, I believe that he should make, you know, some kind of times to actually come here, at least to face uh, some of the questions that we are um, asking him. I mean, obviously, attorney, and as well is here, and uh, of course the CFO is here, and you as well, and, and everybody else. But for me, uh, he should be the one to actually face some of these questions, not you guys. Because according to what you said, it seems like he's the person that, uh, that has access to everything. So here's my, my fear in regard to the audit. If Michael is the guy, again, that has access to all of that, and I'm assuming that uh, the auditor would have to question him in regard to doing the audit. So uh, I think it's fair to say that he can tell he or she whatever he wants and make them believe, although uh, the person who's doing the audit is independent. Because in order for them to do uh, their audit, they will have to rely on some kind of information. And the only person I'm assuming as we speak, be it based on your statement, would be him. So how do I know the information that he gave to them in regard to that audit is true? This is not personal to you, but in regard to the questions or the thing that we are trying to debate. Some of you are doing this for free, but according to what we know, he's getting paid for it. So how do we know uh, whether or not he's telling the truth in regard to the audit that you claim to have, which will give you more access uh, to determine what has been going on? So uh, I don't mind. The organization might do a wonderful job, but I will question that audit due to the fact that, um, you know, what kind of questions uh, they've been asking and where and, 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 and who's in charge of that. Because if he's the guy, I mean, he can say whatever he wants, and nobody can challenge that. So I'm not saying this in regard to you, but I'm making uh, a general statement, and I'm hoping that he will watch this meeting to see that. I mean, although that audit might come out as great as can be, but I will not believe it, not to the fact of the folks who are doing the job. But this gentleman can say whatever he wants to make himself looks good. And it seems like you know this situation has been going for so long in regard to 
uh, some of the folks who have been part of B21. So what I'm so happy is that now we are taking responsibility and we got to taking this 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 stadium over because for so long, you know, the resident of Brockton has been paying for a lot of things. And as we speak, we do not even have, you know, Michael to come here to answer some of the questions that we have. Uh, for me, I think it is very disrespectful because if you are uh, in charge of, uh, you know, something like that, uh, at least by being respectful, you could have at least sent a letter saying that, well, due to this, I will not be able to make it, but not even sending anything to justify the reason why we are not here. It seems like he doesn't care. That's the best way to put it. And I think this council uh, will face uh, a lot of challenges, but I think some of us uh, do have the backbone to question not just M Michael, but anybody who's not paying attention to what we are saying. So for me, I think it would be important to bring him back uh, here, uh, Mr. President, to actually answer some of these questions. Um, I, w I really want to thank you guys for actually put your face out there. And, and even you, you didn't really have to do anything. You could have just come here and then sit down and not saying anything. But for Michael to just probably, you know, hanging out or chilling out, uh, I'm saying this uh, with a lot of boldness and not even having the courage to respect the president, even acknowledge him uh, about maybe an issue that he's having. Well, let's face it, everybody has a problem, right? So if he has a problem that prevents him from being here, it would have been nice for him to state that because he's getting paid for that. He's not doing this for free. But to just uh, not even saying any information, I think it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Uh, it's, it's explained the reason why, you know, um, um, you know, B21 and, 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 and himself have been with a pretty bad job, you know, for the past, uh, I cannot even count, many years. And, 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 and I, I, you know, I did not have an opportunity to tour the building, but I've been there. I've seen a lot of, you know, bad stuff. But I think the taxpayer, you know, uh, does need um, Michael to come here to actually uh, respond to some of our questions because, you know, we are not here to represent ourselves, but we are here to ask the questions that are necessary in order for us to know what's going on. So, uh, Mr. President, given the fact that uh, Michael is not here, I'm not going to, you know, keep on talking pretty much to myself and to you guys about, you know, what needs to be done. But I would encourage you guys to actually request uh, the gentleman to come back here uh, to actually face uh, some of our tough questions. But, you know, in all fairness, I would like to thank you and Attorney Nezirela and, of course, the CFO for actually, you know, having the courage to come here and try at least, you know, to give somewhat explanations to what has been going on there. So thank you so much uh, for taking the time to do this. And thank you, Mr. President. And, and, and I hope Michael will actually hear that, you know, we've been very tough, not just in regard to B21, but also for him not, not having, I should say, the backbone, you know, to come here tonight to actually, you know, facing some of the questions that I do prepare to ask him. So I will not ask any of that because he's not here. It would be meaningless for me to waste my time to ask you those questions because you are not Michael. But I think there's a big problem and I hope, you know, your board will make that determinations to understand that one person shouldn't have access to all his information. Because Sullivan said it, uh, what if he's not here? What's going to happen? What if he just, um, you know, say, you know what, I don't care anymore, I'm out. So who's going to give us, you know, the explanation that we so desperately need. So it's important for us to pay attention, not only to Michael, but also to what we're gonna do next. If we do have uh, somebody else to take responsibility and being accountable to what we must do in this city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Um, you, is there something you wanted to, to respond, Attorney? No, I will certainly make him aware. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to, to share with the, uh, with the Councillor that we don't have subpoena powers in the uh, in the city council and all we can do is request for individuals to come uh, so uh, the president of the board is here so i'm hoping that you would share that information with um mm -hmm. with michael and making sure between the attorney and yourself to make sure that and i believe that there's going to be a motion to continue this item that the next the next time around that he at least you know has the decency of showing up and you know provide some information to us uh, Council, is any, uh, before I go to Council Farwell, any, anything else? Council Nakash. Thank you. Good evening. Um, as Mr. Clarkson said, I've been working on this since I received my packet, and there was just so much missing information, I requested more information. Th this is a disappointing mess, and I know we want to go forward and do the right thing, 
B21 Corporation does, and certainly the City of Brockton does. I believe that both of these properties are tremendous assets for the city, and I'd like to see this work out. But we have to understand what happened in the past before we can go forward. And, um, and I appreciate your efforts this evening and your continuing efforts to work with us to help us figure out what happened. It just appears to me everyone was asleep at the switch, that these buildings fell into such terrible disrepair. Everyone, the city, B21, everyone. Um, the tenants, the tenants. I, I think it's a crime that we have these tremendous utility arrearages, water and sewer, when we chase our individuals, uh, homeowners, when they fall behind in their, in their payments of water and sewer. So I look forward to working with all of you and to uncovering more information. Um, and I, I want you to come back and talk to us some more about this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Fowler? I'd like to move to postpone this to the FinCom meeting in uh, July, and uh, we can yes. master some of this information, and uh, perhaps the next time around we'll be more focused, pointed, and brief. Mm -hmm. uh, second meeting, second, wait a minute, we only have one, one meeting in July, so it'll be the uh, FinCom in July. Can we, can we do a, I'm sorry, could we just do a date certain so we can share that with Mr. Evans so well, Gallerani can. I'm ask him that just to make sure. Thank you. They, uh, I know it's not customary that we do this, but I think it's that important to us and the taxpayers in this community. Um, that will be the 2015th. The 15th of July. Yeah, Monday the 15th. On the motion, though, I mean, there's a high probability after June 30th he might not be employed by B21 and he won't be a parent anyhow. So, right. just for the record. Well, we're gonna we're still gonna do it anyways, and then if he doesn't show, it's on him, and then we can uh, beat the crap pony out of the guys from B20, <laughs> B21. Thank you, Mr. So, <laughs> so uh, July 15th. Okay. If that's good with everybody. Chairman, I would just ask if there is going to be any additional materials provided, mm -hmm. could we get them well in advance yes. of, the, uh, thank of you. that meeting? So, thank you. Thank you. All right, a motion has been properly made and properly second to postpone this agenda item to July 15th. All those in favor? All those opposed? <laughs> July 15th it is. <laughs> Councilors, do we have Councilor Azak? Moment of, I need two moments of personal privilege. Two? Please. Yes. Okay. First off, I'd like to remind everybody that the D.W. Fields Park Association is having their uh, movie in the park this Friday, June 21st from 7 to 9 p.m. It's on the um, gazebo side, and uh, the movie is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. So it's a great time. Bring your family, bring the kids. Um, they'll have fun. I know it was a big success last year when they had it, so we look forward to it again this Friday, June 21st. And uh, my second moment of personal privilege, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Mark Lindy up to the podium. Um, I asked the uh, clerk's office to prepare a citation on behalf of the full city council to be, prese to, to be presented to um, Mr. Jay Miller, who we all know, he's always on the other side of the camera at BCA, has interviewed us, has followed us throughout the years, and um, has helped document many of our, uh, you know, whether it's events here in the city or even during election season, so we all know Jay. and. We wanted to present him with this citation that's going to be presented to him this uh, this week at a commu at Rotary community meeting. And Mr. Lindy from BCA is here to um, accept this on his behalf to be able to give it to him. So I will quickly read the citation. So it's from the city of Brockton. Official citation, be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby extends its congratulations to Jay Miller in recognition of his many years of dedicated service to the city of Brockton at community, uh, I'm sorry, at Brockton Community Access and the Boys and Girls Club of Brockton. And be it further known that the city council extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the president of the council and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk of the council. So we would like to um, just thank Jay for all he's done for the city of Brockton, Boys and Girls Club and all that 
he's done at BCA. So thank you. Make sure that uh, Mark Mark doesn't think that the uh, standing ovation is for Mark. There, there you go. For Jay. <laughs> there you go. Um, I just want to thank the council. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard the sad news about Jay's medical condition, which is public now because there's a GoFundMe page. Um, Jay was at the Boys and, Mil Boys and Girls Club and told me one day at lunch after he had done training at BCA mm -hmm. that he was going to leave Brockton. And I said, no, you're not because I'm going to hire you. I want you to come over. I, you were the Pied Piper of kids over at the Boys and Girls Club. I'd like you to come to BCA and, and do that. And uh, he's been with us for seven years. He's worked pretty much straight through up until the end, being as sick as he is without any complaints or anything. And uh, I, I just wanted to come to the council. The Rotary uh, is going to do a, an award ceremony on Thursday at their lunch meeting um, to honor him as well. Uh, the mayor's put him in for an award, and I just wanted to make sure I know the council appreciates his work, as do we. Um, school committee's probably going to follow suit tomorrow night, and it's hard because I feel like I really can't do much to help him other than appreciate him and to help him and his family with some fundraising, which normally I can't do as a state employee. So I just really appreciate the council doing this and any of you that want to come by on Thursday, uh, the Rotary Club has a luncheon and they're giving out awards to the policeman of the year, the fireman of the year, teacher of the year, and Jay is going to be one of those people recognized. So I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, councilors, I uh, just want to remind we all that we're going to be here next Monday night mm -hmm. for a regular council meeting, and then we're off for a couple of weeks, and uh, we'll be back here on the 15th with the folks that we just invited tonight to come back. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, our CFO, the solicitor, the folks from IT, the wonderful friends at the building department, April. Uh, for being here tonight and the folks from B21 and thank you for sticking around. Having no further business of the people of the city of Brockton, we are adjourned.